Okay, so I guess we can start. Uh, you've seen me around today, um, so I'm just gonna do a quick introduction. Um, I'm Anne Marie Fisher, I'm a senior consultant at ThoughtWorks, and I'm afraid of hedgehogs. Uh, yes, these little things that everyone is calling cute. Um, but I'm not here today to debate either these things are cute or scary. I'm here to talk to you about programming to extreme. So, first question. How many of you have heard uh, about extreme programming before? Perfect. I see hands. That's good. Okay, so let's start first with what extreme programming is. So, extreme programming is a software development methodology invent, um, developed primarily by Ken Beck. So, uh, event programming has been around for years. It's one of the first uh, agile methods. It was very dominant in the late 90s, but then became less dominant when Scrum uh, started to, took, uh, to take over. So, most important than what extreme programming is, it's what's the goal of extreme programming? So the goal of extreme programming is outstanding software development. And this, after all of these years, still makes sense. In any software development team, this goal still makes sense. So um, the same teams that are struggling today to, uh, build, uh, software, uh, to build software that is good, they can do this work way better. So let's, is this working? Okay. So in the end, the purpose here is not to uh, talk about an extreme team. It's not to talk about extreme programming because, like I said, it's been around for, for many years. But what's important is what it left behind. And we're talking here about the values, the principles, um, because in the end, what the software development team wants in the day-to-day -day is to write code that is good for business and provides real value to the uh, customer but also to the programmers. So. Um, in order to explain you the idea of uh, extreme programming, just to be a little bit more clear about what we're talking to today, about today, I'm going to uh, talk about these three terms. So values, practices, and principles. I like very much this picture because it shows you very clear the, um, the relation between these three terms. So values are very high level, right? So they are just a reason why practices happen. Practices are very clear, and they are the evidence of the values being there. Now, values are too abstract to actually drive any behavior. This is why we have principles that act as a bridge between values and practices. Now, let's move on to the values. So, uh, the values of, that come from extreme programming and are still make sense today in the software development uh, these days, First one, problems with projects can invariably be tracked back to somebody not talking to someone else about something important. This is about communication. Communication is the base of our work, or if it's not, it should be. Communication helps us uh, have better teams and provide better software. The next value is simplicity. Simplicity is a hard thing to achieve today. Uh, finding the better solution uh, it's easier than finding the simple solution. But we cannot deny the value of simplicity. A code that is simple, it's easy to maintain, and it's easy to understand. So, next value. I think this is pretty clear. I'm important, and so are you. This value represents respect. Is this easy? We all need to, uh, all the teams, all the members of the team need to respect each other and respect the work they are doing. If you know what the problem is, do something about it. This takes courage, a lot of courage, to come in front and tell to the team that something is not working or maybe you broke something and try to fix it as quick as possible. And the last one, but not the least important, it's feedback. So uh, software development teams today are trying to provide as much feedback as they can handle as quickly as possible. Uh, a weekly um, feedback cycle should not have more, should not take longer than minutes or hours in order to be efficient. The sooner you know the problem, the sooner you can fix it. 
Moving forward to the principle, which I said are the bridge between the values and the practices. So there are a lot of principles coming from extreme programming. I'm just going to talk about some of them that I still, I think they still make, make a lot of sense in these days today. So first one, humanity. People develop code. It's that easy. We should never forget this. We should never remove the humanity from, from software development. Next one, it's diversity. If we build a team with people coming from different backgrounds, with different skills, then we can challenge any, any problem. We can put multiple solutions on the table and we can debate them in order to find the best uh, way of moving forward. Accepted responsibility. Responsibility cannot be assigned. It can only be accepted. No one can tell you what to do. You're not going to do it only if you want to do it. Failure. Now, this is a very interested, uh, interesting principle because I think mo the majority of people are looking at failure as a bad thing. I think the moment you start looking at failure as an opportunity instead of a bad thing, you can really get something out of it. So let's say you have a problem that has three solutions and you don't know which one to pick. Just try all of them. Even if you fail in all of the three situations, you're still going to have some good feedback and learning to move forward. And most important, failure brings improvement. Improvement, we should always strive to improve ourselves, improve our, uh, our software and improve our work. All of these things you can see here are failures before, are tryings. They, are, they, should not, they should be seen as an opportunity because at some point we're going to find the perfect solution to do it, to improve. Now, practices. So uh, I'm going to go to the practices really quickly because the purpose of my presentation is to show you a real scenario where we um, apply these practices every day. So I'm just going to explain them a little bit and then I will move uh, forward to the, to the real scenarios. So. Sit together and whole team. A whole team needs to sit together. It's that easy. It comes together with the value of, com of communication. The better a team, it's immensely more productive if they sit together with no walls bet between them and no glasses. They just uh, try to uh, communicate all day. Next, informative workspace. So the space around us at our team, when I mean around us, I mean a, a team, should reflect the work you're doing, should reflect how you do it. Because it will also help you. We know how easily it's to understand something when we visualize it. All of these no, nice drawing and graphs, the purpose is to help us understand better the problem and try to fix it easier. Weekly cycle and quarterly cycle. So, each team, at least in an extreme programming uh, idea, should plan for a week and should plan for a quarter. So you should not only have the uh, view on what you're going to work next in the next uh, days, but you should also have the bigger picture. What's coming next? What do you need to prepare for? How are your products gonna to, uh, going to change? Or what are the new products that you're going to build in the future? Pair programming. <laughs> Pair programming, um, so uh, it's a very, um, I don't know, controversial, controversial topic. I can tell you that it's the fastest way of learning something. No matter what is your background, no matter what are your skills, no matter your grade, you can always learn something from the people you're pairing with, from the other person. So for me, um, the hardest thing when I started doing pair programming, and I've been doing it for the last one year and a couple of months, it's getting rid of the headphones. So, um, working with the background, not of music, of my music, but working with the background of other people talking and explaining each other solutions and uh, talking about completely other topics than the one I'm working on. This was the hardest part for me into starting doing pair programming. Now, the um, principle here is single cause base, coming from extreme programming, but I'm going to extrapolate this to trunk-based development. Does anyone know what trunk-based development means? Perfect. 
So the quickest idea is trunk-based development means all the team is working on only one branch. That's it. In a version control uh, system, all the team is pushing to the same branch. There are no branches in between. Test-first programming, which brings us to TDD, or test-driven development, which says that you write your test first. You have a problem that you're trying to solve. You break it into the smallest functionalities you can find. You write the test that, that uh, fails at the beginning. You, then you write the code that makes it pass. And then your test is green, and you move forward to the next functionality. Of course, there can be also some refactoring in, uh, in this process, but uh, the steps repeat themselves. Daily deployment and continuous delivery. So daily deployment is the uh, principle that says that you should de deploy your code to production at least one day, at the end of the day, every day. Now, extrapolating this to continuous delivery means that each commit goes directly to production. Each commit you do goes directly to production every time. There's no in between. 10 minutes builds and con continuous integration. Now these are required in order, to do, in order to do continuous delivery. You need a server that integrates all your code, all the system, runs all the tests against it, makes sure that everything works perfectly integrated. And all of this needs to happen in 10 minutes. Everything that is over 10 minutes is just uh, time that you lose. Because all of this process from the moment you push and the moment the code makes it to production, it should be automated. So you are looking at the screen waiting for your code to make, to make it to production. So this process should be quick. You cannot wait one hour for, for this to happen. So now let's move forward to the most interesting part, which is a real scenario. So the real scenario is one day of work in my team. All of these practices that I mentioned before are going to be covered in the story that I'm going to tell you next. So um, let's say it's, this is my, uh, my space, my team space. Of course, this is a little bit cleaner than it really looks like. But uh, as you can see, there are no walls around it. There is a big uh, table with a lot of chairs around it. And when I come to work, I just grab a chair and sit somewhere because no one has their, their, sign, uh, their seat assigned. So I just sit at the table wherever I find a spot. Usually I try to come early in the morning to, find the, to get the better seats, but not, it doesn't get the way I want it every day. So um, the covering principles that I mentioned before. So um, practices, sorry. So, Sitting together, we all sit at the same ta table with no walls around it. We are a whole team of nine people, and we all work together, and we try to support our ch each other's learning and well-being also. So informative workspace. Our all, the walls around us are full of charts and graphs and retro actions. So anyone who comes by our uh, space at any point can easily figure it out what are we working on and how do we do that. So next, in order to start working, we need to plan. So we plan for a week and we plan for a quarter. Every Monday, we have our, daily, uh, we have our grooming, which takes an hour. And when uh, we decide, our product manager tells us, OK, what are the priorities? And we estimate, and we start working on that. But also, every quarter, we have a meeting with all the stakeholders, which we try to understand what are the um, features that are going to come next in the next quarter, so we, we can prepare for that. Maybe we can build a better solution for, for our uh, current system that will prepare for, for those feature changes in the products or the new product, products that are coming. So all the team is aware of what's coming. How do we work together? We do pair programming every day, eight hours a day, five days a week. How do we develop code? Now, this might look a little bit complicated, but once I, I talk you through it, you'll see it's, it's actually pretty easy. So we follow the uh, test-driven development, which means, uh, let's say we have a small task. We broke it into small functionalities. We start by writing the red test. We write some code. We make it pass. Maybe do some refactoring, which just uh, is going to repeat the three, the three steps. And once 
everything is done. We run all the tests to make sure that all the code works uh, well integrated. And now we can say that the task is ready. But it's not done. So in our team, in order to say that the task is done, the uh, code needs to make it to production. So after the, we uh, say the task is ready, then we just push the code. Now we use only one branch, like I mentioned in the practices before. So um, before pushing, maybe we have some code coming from the upstream, but we, we fix the conflict. And then uh, let's say it was an a, a easy one, and we move forward. So from now on, we just sit back, relax, and we look at the screen, maybe watch some funny videos, because uh, all of this is automated. We don't have to do anything. So from the moment we push our code from our local machines, the CI server, which is the continuous integration server, picks up all the changes. It runs uh, all, it integrates with all the other changes in the system and runs all the tests against it and makes sure that everything works properly and nothing breaks. So after this, is everything gets uh, clear and everything happened in 10 minutes um, or less. Uh, if everything is uh, OK and the build is green, all of these changes go to the stage environment. The purpose of the stage environment is just to test the scripts that are uh, automating um, the work of pushing the code from, from one uh, stage to another. So if everything is green, the code makes it to production. And now we can say that uh, our task is done. So um, I, I think I covered all the, I, I hope I didn't miss any of the practices. Uh, from in this story that I mentioned before, because what's important here is that they all need to kind of work together in order to achieve this whole process. Like you can't just do one single thing in order to achieve continuous delivery. Okay, so um, this being said, I would invite you to try it out. So don't try it out all at once. Um, just try small pieces of it. Take a small practice and just play with it. See how it works for you. I can tell you the benefits are, are gigantic. I, I've tried it uh, since, since I joined ThoughtWorks. So honestly, for me, it's a completely different way of looking at software development. Now, at the beginning, you might feel like this. But it gets better. Try, uh, sorry. Uh, so stay aware, adapt, change. Once you understand, this is actually the paradigm of extreme programming, but that's not import what's important here. What's important is that you need to understand that if you want to change something, that ch change comes from you. You're the, the easiest change you can do, it's in yourself or in the way you work. Now, um, change starts with awareness. So start looking by the way, uh, by the things you are doing in your day-to-day -day work and maybe you can improve something. Maybe you can do something better. You can do something faster with better quality. So um, one more thing I want to uh, tell you before I finish. Um, so success, in order to have success, you need two things, technique and good relationships. And I left this idea for the end because this is, a, is the idea that I want to uh, for you to, to understand and to, to get mostly from, from this presentation. So in order, um, success doesn't just happen. You need to prepare for success. You can't just uh, sit behind uh, avoiding success. You need to try things out with the risk of things not working and face the consequences. Of course, that can leave you a little bit exposed. That can make you feel a little bit not comfortable. But this is why you need the good relationships. You need a safe environment where you can say your opinion, when you can speak up, not being afraid that you're going to be judged, or, uh, and making sure that you're going to be listened and your opinion will matter. That's it. Thank you. Questions? I have a question about uh, the practice of sitting together as a whole team. Today, like, as today, like, 
most of the companies at least offer partly remote work, how highly would you value like really being physically in, like next to your uh, developers, next to your colleagues? Because like there are some issues, at least when you look at the market, it's always also like easier to find somebody when you actually are offering remote work. As to answer your question, uh, we are actually, I mentioned we are nine people in the team. One of our uh, team members, it's actually in another location. So in order to fix that and still have the feeling that we are sitting together, we have a big screen next to our table, uh, a really big screen, which is uh, all time from the day, uh, from the morning, we, we, when we come up, we set it up. And um, there is continuous connection with uh, the, the people on the other side, like we have an open connection with the microphone and the camera. So it's not exactly like you're sitting together, but it's kind of pretty close. So this is the way, of course, we have remote people. Now in the team I'm working now, we only have one, but we try to uh, travel as much as we can. So we try to go there, we try to bring the people that are there in, in, uh, in here in Barcelona. But this is the way we fix it day by day. We have this environment set up uh, that we re really facilitates working with remote, and it works. This, we, we still consider sitting together. Hi, uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, my, my question is more about how to implement this principle of technique of stream programming to a particular kind of team that is very heterogeneous. So there is not only backend, but there is as well frontend, and there are QA. So doing this kind of fair programming is actually not really, well, people ha will have some concerns about it because they cannot do this kind of fair programming. So how will you implement uh, this practice uh, in this kind of heterogeneous team? Fair programming, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. But there are other concerns too about TV, for example, all releases in, in one week, um, not deploying in 10 minutes because there are a lot of failures. It's called the UI. This is a very good question, and it's the question that I mostly get when I, when I give this, uh, the presentation on, on this topic. Um, and yes, it's hard to get here. It's the first time that I'm in a team when we actually managed to do it end-to-end, -end, like a really in, uh, fully uh, continuous delivery process. Um, I've seen it implemented in smaller steps before. Like I said, you sh uh, I don't know, I think that the team needs to start by um, adopting some, some of the practices. So if you cannot do pair programming, you can still do the other practices. If your build takes longer than 10 minutes, you can look at the test and try to understand why do they take so long to, um, to, uh, to run. So from my experience, it's always a reason why, and f people, I think the most, uh, mostly problem we face when we try to apply, uh, we are a consultancy company, right? So we have, uh, we, we help different clients to implement these uh, methodologies and these practices. So the first thing we, we tell them is that there's always a people problem. So uh, people, you need to, to convince people that they need to improve. From that, on, that moment on, you can find solutions. The test, maybe not all the tests need to be there. Maybe they, make, they don't make sense anymore. So my advice is to just try one by one uh, the things that, the practices, see which one fits best your team because not, uh, not all work for all the teams and just get to a point where everything makes sense for all the people in the team. Like you can actually say, I'm sure the moment you want to, to implement this is because you feel a pain, you feel a problem that it needs to be solved. So the first thing is to understand exactly what's the problem and get to a common um, understanding with, with the team and, and start from there. The, the practices can be independently applied when we talk about pair programming, when we talk about the whole stream of continuous delivery, you can still make parts of it, like you can still make the, the, uh, the 10 minutes build, you can do the trunk-based development, which you can, if you have questions after, you can ask because it's a, it comes with a lot of things, but uh, of course you can implement small parts of it and still s see the benefit. I hope this answers your question. Perfect, thank you. Other questions? 
Okay. Thank you very much for listening.